let's make a super low fat cheesy sauce that you can put on anything. From vegetables. Have you ever looked at the label of vegan cheeses or things like that? They always have like either nuts or a lot of different oils. A lot of time it's coconut oil, which is saturated fat. So for people like me who are trying to stay super low fat, that's not such a good idea. Nuts in themselves are healthy, but the oils, not necessarily. So we decided let's make one from potatoes. And it's actually kind of common. A lot of people have done it. This is just my version of this recipe. So to start off with, you want three medium potatoes, okay? And we peeled them because you want them peeled. And I'm just gonna cut them. Now, if you're new to the vegetable cheese-like sauce, this might seem really strange, but if you watched our halushki video yep. and you noticed that we used the starch water to replicate a buttery-like feeling and sensation, a starchy cheese sauce makes a lot of sense. Yep. And I'm just cutting them into, you know, chunks. It's not crucial. And then we also need some carrots. Now, I measured out six ounces of carrots um, just because that's what I said and that's what Derek put down in the thing. And I'm just gonna chop off the ends cause they're kinda, you know, I don't like the ends. These are not peeled by the way. We almost never peel carrots anymore. There's just like no reason to. Typically we wouldn't peel the potatoes either, but in this particular sauce, the peelings really aren't going to yeah, add something positive. You don't, you don't want the peels. That's kind of gross. I don't think, I think they would actually interfere with the starch formation personally. Maybe, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't actually experimented. And I need some onion. How much onion do I need? Roughly a fourth of an onion. A fourth of one onion. Uh, these very specific measurements that I gave, you know? <laughs> we we tried to do a number and a, a weight on the carrots and potatoes because if you notice, carrots and potatoes don't come all the same size. Yeah. So saying three carrots would be like, well, three big carrots, three small carrots, two big ones, one small one, what? But so. it's, you know, recipes like this are also quite forgiving. So it's not as big of a deal. And that quarter of a onion, right in the bowl. This entire bowl gets dumped into a pot of boiling water. Not the bowl, just the stuff in the bowl. Right, the stuff in this bowl gets dumped into a pot of boiling water for 15 to 18 minutes. You want everything to get super soft. Be back once that's done. Okay, after like 17 minutes or so, I checked the potatoes to make sure they were very soft. Okay, you want them to basically break apart. I do turn the boil down a little bit while it's boiling so that it's not so violent and makes the potatoes actually like fall apart and then put them into your blender. You don't need a Vitamix for this, but it actually does help. Um, a high-speed blender makes everything easier, but in this case, it's not completely necessary because it's potatoes and carrots. I mean, they're gonna blend out. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna need some seasonings to flavor this to make it cheesy. Right, otherwise it's just potatoes, carrots, and onions. First up is nutritional yeast. And how much do I need? We need a fourth of a cup. So four tablespoons. I usually just to eyeball this, but I'm gonna measure it today because I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to, mostly. That's three. You can add more or less of the nutritional yeast as you like. Um, I just found that the quarter cup seemed to be just about right. Next up is a tablespoon of lemon juice. We're just gonna be using- a tablespoon of anything else? Nope, everything nope. else is a I teaspoon. Yeah. Okay. We're just using yeah, you can use Robot. fresh squeezed if you really want to. Yeah. Um, this stuff works great. I don't, I don't really have a problem with it. I'm not. Whoops. I'm not all kinds of hoity about stuff like that. The lemon juice though is necessary. You can also use apple cider vinegar if you wanted to. I've actually substituted them out in this. Either one works. You don't really taste lemon juice or vinegar. It's more just to give that kind of a sour taste to the cheese because cheese has kind of a sour flavor. What's up next? I'm done. We our, seem to do that every video. Our favorite combo, garlic powder and onion powder. Yay! And I, it's a teaspoon of each. I'm gonna eyeball it. Cause I'm just tired of using spoons. Not crucial. There we go. We need to own stock and garlic powder and onion powder. We, we should probably do should. That. And how much salt? A half teaspoon of salt. May I have the half teaspoon? You measure, may. Please? Gonna, I'm gonna actually measure the half teaspoon of salt. You need to add some salt. Che cheese tends to be pretty salty, so it's kind of important. And adjust to your own taste. I mean, if this comes out too salty for you, then use less salt. If you want it more salty, use more. 
Okay, so now that we have this, at this point we want to add a little bit of water. And what do you, half to three quarters of a cup. Yep. So I'm going to start with like just under half a cup and I'm going to use the water that I use to boil the potatoes and the carrots in and I'm going to blend this up. If I need a little bit of water, I'm going to add a tablespoon at a time until it gets to the consistency that I want it to be, which is usually pretty thick. You can always thin it later, but you want it to stay as thick as possible to start off with. Okay, I ended up using three quarters of a cup of water and you see how much we got here. And just check this out. Look at this pour. I mean, it's just beautiful. And the color comes from the carrots. That's what the carrots are there for. If you wanted it to be white, you could leave the carrots out, but I think it actually adds a little bit to the body of it too. Um, does add to the flavor in some way. It smells like cheese, okay? It just really does. Yeah. Granted, I haven't had actual cheese in a while. So this is just a, a replacement kind of deal. Okay, so I tasted it. So, some things that you can do with this cheese before we get to the tasting part is what? You totally cheated. I did. <laughs> the, the things you can do with it though. Tonight, I am going to take some rotini pasta and some steamed broccoli and mix them into this. And we have a meal. It's actually lovely. If you have like any kind of a seitan hot dog or something that you like, throw them in there too. It's all good. Beans can go in it. Beans. I mean, anything. Just put this over steamed broccoli sometime. It's incredible. We dip chips in it. Go ahead yeah. and grab the, the chips because I know you're, you're chomping at the bit here. Um, as far as storage, you can store this in the fridge for probably about a week or so. I wouldn't freeze it. It's going to separate and fall apart. Um, but in our house, it doesn't really last that long. I usually make about this much at a time and we have like one day of macaroni and cheese and then another day I'll do something else with it. You can throw salsa in this and it makes a great queso style dip thing because queso is cheese. I don't know why people say queso. It's it, uh. queso is cheese. Um, but yeah, I mean, check this out. It's just... It's got just the right drip. I would actually put this on pizza. We used it to make uh, steak and cheese with, with mushrooms. We did nachos with it. Anything you can imagine. We Oh, tacos. We pour it on tacos. Cheese steak. It's just so good. It's so simple and so tasty. Now, depending on what you're utilizing it for, you can tweak the recipe mm -hmm. ever so slightly. For example, if you're going to just use it as a cheese sauce for broccoli, you might want to punch up the acidity. We did that and we found out the extra acidity paired lovely with the broccoli, really enhanced the broccoli flavor, but still had a great cheese sauce. Brian already talked about adding salsa to it. That is a fantastic way to utilize it uh, on nachos, on tacos, mm -hmm. on just a beans and rice bowl. Basically whatever. anything you would do with cheese, you could do with this. Hot cheese sauce. sauce. Um, yeah. Hot Adds sauce. hot sauce to it. It's really awesome. Um, but I mean like dip raw vegetables in it, you know, all sorts of things. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. You can actually make a grilled cheese with this, but you want to make sure that you get it really, really, really thick. And it does actually congeal in the fridge. So if you want to make a grilled cheese, the best way, let this sit in the fridge overnight and then spread it onto the bread and then grill it up. And it works really, really, really well. But we're just going to sit here and eat chips and cheese, apparently. <laughs> and um, so good. save some for macaroni and cheese later. But uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time on The, the Bistro. Bistro.